Hello, welcome to some Griffith's Occasional Series in MATLAB Tutorials. Today we'll be looking at, well, I suppose you could call it video compression, but it's also a bit of image processing. So, you may think that to, uh, one way of compressing would be to take the original image, uh, downsample it, say and reduce it by a factor of 4 in the x and y direction, and then at the other end an upsample. <coughs> and that would be a way of reducing the the transmission load on an image. But as we'll see when we run this program, uh, we run into certain problems. So I'm going to run the code and then we might just go back and look at the code to just see. So a number of images has popped up. So there's the original image and this is Barbara, she's fairly famous and in image processing circle. And why is this famous? Because when we look at the headscarf, we've got lots of vertical patterns well near vertical there and then over here we're getting them at well kind of 45 and then here the tablecloth has loads of patterns so this is a deliberate image and why are we looking at this deliberately because we're looking at well indirectly Nyquist sampling theorem and we're not going to go into the theory of it but it's just that these fine vertical lines cause hassle there and actually just I know, I've only just seen this now as I look at it there's horizontal lines there and there's vertical lines there so this would be a fairly good image to test uh, the quality so uh, we look at the code now in a second so just so figure three here so we look at the code so figure three what did I do with that image I took the original image I downsampled it by 4 in the x and y direction and then I resized it back to the original image and we can see here that the distortion is quite evident here just move that ever so slightly so even just looking at the well our right our left the distortion there is fairly bad now over on figure 5 we took the original image we applied a very big low pass filter, a Gaussian filter, quite big. And what was that doing? So we were, uh, before we did the subsampling, so a low pass filter, if you've never come across it before, would be in effect uh, uh, to uh, remove the sharp edges. So we're removing the high frequencies, we're removing the, the sharp edges. And then what we did was, so we applied the low pass filter. This is figure five here on the right. We downsampled by four, in each direction and then we resized to get back to the original size here so you can see here with I'm not saying which is the best and which is the worst so this aliasing here is not as noticeable but what we've done is that the, because it's a low pass filter the image isn't as sharp now it's up to yourself which is the best view I suppose on if you're looking at it from a video standard uh, we'd say that to the viewer on the left hand side, if you imagine you are looking at this coming from some news feed and they use this as a method of reducing the bandwidth you downsampling by four in each direction and then show this to the viewer, it would be quite distracting but on the right hand side, that's figure five over here that the viewer would say, oh the image isn't sharp but the, the, the distraction of the of the um, of the aliasing uh, due to the Nyquist frequency uh, theorem, that the aliasing is uh, not noticed. And why isn't it noticed? Because we applied this big low pass filter. So let's look at the code here. So lines 2, 3, and 4, you know this by now. We've read in line 7, we read in the image. Uh, line 8, we've displayed it. And on line 9, I've got the height, width, and depth. Uh, on lines 11, to 14 I just said well if it's 11 and 12 if it's grayscale leave it as grayscale and then on line 14 if it's a three bander we're just going to take the first band we're going to take the red component as the grayscale uh, I'm going to define my down sampling as 4 so IM3 is IM2 and we're going 1 5 9 13 etc and 1, 5, 9, 13, etc. in the x and y direction. So we're taking every fourth pixel. Line 20, we display the uh, 
the down sample image and then on line 23 here we're resizing and we're resizing back uh, to that height and width and the height and width is the height and width that we got uh, up there so we're resizing back to 512 by 512 and we're using bicubic uh, you can do nearest neighbor you can do bilinear and bicubic but bicubic will give you the smoothest and we show the upsampled image there on this line here we apply a filter what's the filter we're applying a gaussian it's of size 9 by 9 I had to play with this a little bit beforehand and then Sigma so that would be the standard deviation as one so I'm applying a 9 by 9 with a fairly big standard deviation to the original image remember IM2 is back here and then what I did was IM6 in this line is the subsampled image taking every four pixel in the X and Y direction and then on line 33 I upsampled uh, by using IM resize and I displayed it there. You, if you want a line 38 you could take a certain area of the image and just look at it in detail but I didn't bother. Ok so let's go back before I finish. Just a recap. So I might just put these there and put that up there just to do the original image uh, where the mouse is pointing to there is down sampled uh, by 4 in the both the X and Y so it would be 1 16th of the original size no pre-filtering and then I up sampled again and we can see here the the massive aliasing going on in these vertical and horizontal stripes over on the right hand side I down sampled after I did the pre-filter that's the Gaussian low pass filter and then I took figure 4 and I upsampled it to figure 5 and there it is there and I hope uh, you see what I'm trying to do and I hope you would say that uh, to the viewer if you're using this say in video now I know you were only looking at one frame but if you're looking at this in video that this figure here figure 5 is less distracting less um, irritant to the eye is the way I would put it than figure 3 here on the left hand side. Okay so hope that helps. Thanks for listening.